love history. Did your yeah. wife keep her maiden name? Man, I tried to call you. Did you change your number? Man, what you wearing? You smell good. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Muchos thank you. It is Anthony Castrovince of MLB.com, whose pen is mightier on hot stove this morning. Anthony, good morning. And before we get into uh, the meat of this discussion, Ron and I have been playing Immaculate Grid all morning. You being a Clevelander, <laughs> Um, we're looking for uh, a Ray and an Indian. Just by the end of the interview, have somebody for us that's nice and obscure that gets us a rarity score of under 1%. I'll just put that out there. Uh, let's get into okay. what you're writing about these days, and you're talking about teams that could define this offseason, this hot stove season. And we'll start with the first team to fill their managerial vacancy, and that's the San Francisco Giants. Yeah, I, I put the Giants high on this list a year ago as well. We know what happened there. They tried. <laughs> they tried to have somebody take a gargantuan amount of money, uh, but it didn't work out with Aaron Judge, and it didn't work out uh, with Carlos Correa. So we know the money's in the till. It's just a matter of who will take it. And then you have the just the dynamic of just having a disappointing year. You know, Farhan Zaidi was extended recently, but you know his his handpicked manager Gabe Kapler did not work out and that's an indication that things are not going to plan so now they move on to the Bob Melvin era and there's still that need for star power but more pointedly you know they need some help in center field uh we heard in and out spokesperson John Heyman mentioned the Giants as a potential fit for Cody Bellinger that would make a lot of sense uh young Hu Lee coming over from Japan he would make a lot of sense for this club it's not a great market you know to have big money to spend on position players as we know um, so I don't know if they have to get creative and, and do, you know, multiple means of augmenting this lineup. But, you know, that, that's a clear area of interest. And, and, and of course, rotation stability as well. Uh, Brian Price is their new pitching coach, uh, but they're going to need some arms in that rotation. So they, they should have money to spend. We know that. You know, Anthony, the talk of last uh, offseason was the Texas Rangers. You think they're going to be the talk mm -hmm. again this year? They could very well be. You know, they come off that World Series run and, and the revenue streams that come with that. And just in general, I mean, it's an aggressive franchise right now. And in the last calendar year, Jacob deGrom, Nathan Avaldi, Jordan Montgomery, Max Scherzer all added to that rotation through free agency and trade. And uh, and Montgomery, of course, a, a perfect fit to come back. And, and they could add depth on top of depth, as they've done before. I've, I've heard <laughs> it's... I've heard several people in the industry say, you know, look out for them with Shohei Otani, you know, and, and everybody's talking about Otani and everybody's fitting him here and there. And but that's as good a fit as any. And you can imagine just just him in that lineup. What a monster that would be. Um, they're in on Josh Hader as well. Uh, their bullpen kind of needs to be rebuilt uh, outside of Jose Leclerc. Uh, Araldis Chapman is a free agent. They were down to basically three guys that they trusted uh, in that great playoff run. But, you know, for a full regular season, they'll, they'll probably have to, you know, beef up that staff quite a bit. And, and Hater could be a, a focal point there. So there's a lot of things the Rangers could be in on this winter. Yeah, I could see that uh, Hater marriage happening there in Arlington. Uh, Shohei, I still, I know the agent wants us all to believe that all 30 teams are in. I don't buy it. I still <laughs> think he wants to be on the West Coast. And it's a limited number of teams, realistically, for Shohei. Uh, let me ask you about the Cubs. Because, man, they splashed last year. Jamison Tyone, Cody Bellinger. Uh, and Dansby yeah. Swanson, the big prize. Is there more in store for the Cubs this year under new management with Craig Council? I mean, 2023 was really interesting for the Cubs because you mentioned those big splashes, and yet a lot of us looked at them going into the season, and it felt a little short. And then, you know, going into July, it looked very short. And then they had this great month of July. And then, of course, you know, weren't able to get it done at the end of the year and get into the playoffs. So the Cubs were both a surprise and a disappointment, if that's possible. Um, and then they stunned everybody in the industry by adding, uh, you know, Craig Council. And that I, I moved them up my list. This, this list was written and then uh, had not yet run. And, you know, as soon as they hired Craig Council, I moved them up a few spots because, you know, if they're that aggressive in the managerial realm, you would think they'd be aggressive with the roster. And there's, there's work to be done here. You know, Marcus Stroman's a free agent. Uh, Jamer Candelario is a free agent. Cody Bellinger, of course, who is as, as good a fit as any to, to come back. You know, that was a, a good marriage and, and a happy marriage and, and could be a lasting marriage. So um, they, they could use an experienced starting pitcher. They could use bullpen help. They've been active in the Japanese market in the past, most recently with Seiya Suzuki. And, of course, this is a strong market for Japanese talent. So, yeah, I, I expect big things from the Cubs. Uh after doing a big thing in the dugout. Anthony, the Orioles won over 100 games uh, last year. They've got a lot of young talent coming. Where can they fill some free agents in to make that team even better next year? 
Yeah, it's hard to know what to expect from the Orioles. I, I'm kind of on the middle of the list because, you know, we, we've come to not expect big things from them on the acquisition front. And yet, has a roster ever been better set up, you know, to to do those bold finishing touches? Um, maybe they don't need finishing touches. They won 101 games. But I do think uh, when you look at that pitching staff, you know, particularly with Bautista out uh, in the bullpen, you know, I, I think you could certainly make some upgrades there. And, you know, they got it done when they seem short staffed in the rotation in 2023, but it did, it did look a little short in October. So is this a winter where, you know, last year we had the comments from Mike Elias that they were ready for liftoff and, you know, it led to Kyle Gibson being signed and not much else. Is this the year they're truly ready for liftoff in free agency or trade because they still have the best farm system in baseball, despite all these big graduations to the big league level. I mean, they could do just about anything they want on the trade front, be it, Dylan Cease, Corbin Burns, Logan Gilbert, Shane Bieber, uh, you name it. Um, you know, do they trade for a, a marquee starter and and sign a you know a marquee bullpen arm like a hater? I mean, they could do that. They they have the financial flexibility when you look at their future payroll obligations. So um, again, maybe you don't expect these things from the Orioles, and, and we know the history there, the recent history in particular. But man, it's it's there for the taking. You kind of want to wish it into existence because I think that roster deserves it. Last team we want to hit you on here on this topic, teams that could define the offseason, the Seattle Mariners. And for me, uh, if they do land as is being talked about, Juan Soto, then that's probably the only move they would need to make to define the offseason. Is there more there? And, and how realistic are the Mariners in pursuit of Juan Soto? Well, the Mariners, they certainly need to be uh, aggressive in pursuit of some kind of a bat. You know, Jerry Depoto has put it as a, a banger who goes out and bangs. That's what they need in that lineup. And that's well put. Um, and DH is a spot where they could do that. So, hey, go out and just shine Shohei Otani. And, you know, the Ichiro connection is strong there. So just make that happen. But if you can't do that, then sure. Yeah, they have the pieces to do a Soto trade. They have depth in, in young starters, major league ready starters. And that's something San Diego could certainly use. So... You know, everyone is kind of tied Juan Soto more to the Yankees, but I think the I think Seattle went into the winter as a, a really good sleeper uh, in the Soto market, and, and maybe uh, things could heat up there. But um, you know, I've pegged them to Otani as many have. Again, that's kind of a wishing it into existence thing because we've heard we've heard Depoto say that the 54% comment, you know, trying to win 54% of games in a in a 10-year span, and that doesn't lend itself to you know going out and signing a whatever it is, $500 million free agent. But, um, you know, I, I do think Seattle, it's another roster that, that I think deserves attention, like deserves an investment in, in some stability because they, they have great starting depth. They got one of the best rotations in the game. Obviously a, a hungry fan base that, that has, you know, suffered through a lot. And, and they finally had that first playoff appearance last year and that disappointment this year. So I, I think it doesn't take much to make this a World Series caliber club. 54%. Give me a, a Ray and a Guardian or Indian that is lower than 54%. I got one top of mind that I feel pretty good oh, about. We get What do you got? Uh, I mean, the first guy that comes to mind is my friend Chris Jimenez. I don't know if um, oh, that's, you know, he'd be uh, that's good. He'd that, be low. In the, I think he'd be low, right? That yeah. might be. And, uh, can you do Steven Vote now as a, as a manager count? I don't. I don't believe so. I don't think so. Chris Jimenez is really good. Yeah. I was going to hit you with Russell Brannion, Russell the Muscle. <laughs> that would be oh, good there one. you go. I'm going Jimenez here, and we're going to see how that does for you. Um, hang on. I know this is great TV when I'm typing <laughs> right. something, yeah. and you know we, we have to wait for your reaction. And you guys call Jimenez. It's with a G. Just it's with you know. a G. Yeah. And uh, your rarity <laughs> score on Chris Jimenez is is. 0.1%. Well wow. done, Anthony Kastrovitz. I gave you no well, uh, no notice there, and you nailed it. Uh, Chris Jimenez will be very pleased uh, with this announcement. I, I'll be sure to make him aware that this happened.